Welcome to the All About PT Podcast. The All About PT Podcast is brought to you by OrthoCore Physical Therapy. If you live in the state of Rhode Island, if you live outside of the state of Rhode Island, if you live anywhere in the world and you need physical therapy, they are your go-to spot. We have offices in North Kingstown and Westerly. If you are thinking about getting some physical therapy or if you're in some need of some personal training, mention that you listen to the podcast and they are offering free fitness screens and free injury screens. Now, we are on to the next episode. Thank you for listening to the All About PT podcast, episode number five, which is my first interview. My first interview with my coworker, Ed, who wrote that great article on hip replacements. We have a nice little fireside chat. Uh, we talk about, we just elaborate more on the article, um, talk about, you know, things that we see with hip replacements, things that uh, he didn't get an opportunity to write in the blog post because we don't want it to be too long. So uh, it's a really great episode. We have a great time chatting about hip replacements, have some good jokes in there. So I hope you enjoy the All About PT podcast. Thank you for listening. It's the All About PT podcast. Here's your host, award-winning physical therapist and fitness guru, Ian Manning. And boom, we're live. The All About PT Podcast, episode number Cinco. What number is that, Ed? Five. There you go. Ed, do you know that you are my first official guest on the All About PT Podcast? I did not know that. How special do you feel right now? Extremely special. Yes. To all those listening out there, you might know this, but Ed seems to be a bit sarcastic when he talks. I do not. (laughs) So you have to be ready for that, for this episode. So this episode is the first episode where my, so Ed is my colleague, my partner in crime down in the Westerly office, and he wrote an article back in the day, meaning like a month ago, um, probably, right? Maybe? Uh, Around, yeah. Yeah. Uh, about hip replacements. So Ed comes to us with a lot of experience in a nursing facility dealing with a lot of post-surgical knees and hips. And so he wrote an article on what he's seen in the past. So now that Ed's been here for almost a year uh, working in the orthopedic side, the, the after afterlife of the SNF facility, um, he wrote a great article on what we should think about with hip replacements, what the differences are, and kind of pre and post rehab. So, um, and I think, you know, the, the, the episode before this, I just do a read aloud. So it's like a bedtime story for all of our listeners, which is a great bedtime story. So I read your article to them in the episode. And just to let you know, I did listen to it and it put me to sleep. Yeah, exactly. Well, you wrote it. So that's, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you're making fun of me and my voice or your inability to write exciting articles. I don't write exciting articles. <laughs> So well, it's a combination of both. Yeah, well, uh, even last night, Ed and I were texting, and I said, I can't wait to have fun. And his immediate response was, we need to discuss what you consider fun. Yes. Yeah. So um, in your experience in working in a nursing facility, what are some kind of things that you see post-surgical that people were either surprised by or weren't really prepared for? Because I feel like when people go into those surgeries – the thing that I hear, even, you know, we see them in this facility two, three weeks out after they've been to either a nursing facility or home, and they're always surprised by a lot of things with the surgery that they feel like they weren't prepared for. So what are, like, some of those top things that, you, that you've that you dealt with? Two of them offhand. One, there'd be a lot of people who come to the nursing home, and they were, I think, surprised at how well they were moving. So they're kind of iffy, like, I don't know why I, I came to the nursing home. Yeah. So it's one of those where you're in so much pain prior, not after surgery, you're feeling good, and they're, like, they're really surprised that they can walk. Yeah. Then you have the other category of people who waited way too long to have the surgery, and now they're uh, – and, and they have other comorbidities, other issues – and they are really need the nursing home to be able to to get by and to to help the therapy and, and to get moving. Yeah. Do Do you find that? Um, well, first, to your point of people are surprised by how good they feel. I feel like there's so many people who put it off, put it off, put it off, and I think that really comes from when replacements first came out. You know, people are in their fifties could have replacements because they have no cartilage left in their knees because usually they've been pretty active. 
it's usually the super active people or the super overweight people who need need the joint replacements just because of the wear and tear in the joint. And I feel like so many people put it off, put it off, put it off because initially when they first came out, they didn't last that long. So people don't want to get two two replacements within their life cycle. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case anymore. And I feel like a lot of people put it off and suffer with that mentality and it's not worth it. And they don't need to suffer. Yeah. It, it's one of those where it's it's gotten to a point where I believe the surgeries, the surgeons, everyone, the equipment, the hardware that's going in, everything's gotten better. Yeah. So and it continues to get better. But yeah. I mean, there are hips and knees that are, you know, spending what, one night, two nights? Yeah. And some of them are going home the day of surgery. Yeah, it's really progressing to a day surgery. Yeah. So it's it's one of those where I don't know, you don't need to suffer as much. Like, yeah, I think there's there's still that fear out there of it's this giant, and it's not a pleasant surgery. Like it's, I call it surgery by Black and Decker. Have you ever been in the OR yeah. when they? Oh, it's 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 violent. It's yeah. violent. People, yes, you don't. You don't. It. That's the one thing I would I would also say is don't go to YouTube and check no. and try and say, hey, I want to see what's going to happen because yeah. that's that's you don't need to see that. That's not going to help your decision. No, <laughs> not not at all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I feel like so many people post-op, I, you know, they're just like, oh, I wish I had done this sooner, you know, because they just suffer and they don't get to do the things that they want to do. And it's all based upon that fear of needing to get a replacement again down the road. And I just feel like that's... it's Yeah, I, I completely agree. We, we've already talked about this before. I think it's, you get to a point where the way I see it is you, you're in a lot of pain, and a lot of people can adapt and and work through the pain. Right. But then when you start decreasing your activity or not doing the fun things that you enjoy doing, like right. you know golfing, playing tennis, uh, bike riding, just walking, right. and then all of a sudden you're not doing that stuff because of the pain, right. and you're 55, 60 years old, right. well, why, why? That, that should give you that... A little light bulb should come on and be like, uh, maybe it's time. Yeah, I get it done. And then we see the other side of that of people who are active, weight, can't do what they used to do. And to your point before, now you start to get some obesity that comes in. You can get some diabetes. So you, you start to get higher risk to your health, comorbidities and issues that come in that were never there before, all because they're just waiting to get that replacement. Yeah. Um, have you seen, I mean, I, I feel like I've seen a shift from the, in your article, you talked about the posterior lateral and anterior approach. I feel like there's a shift towards the anterior approach now with the improvement in in the instruments and also in the replacement. Do you find that to be? Uh, I think there is. I, I think there is, a, it has been a shift to the anterior approach. Uh, and it just, it's decreases the amount of uh, dislocations. Yeah, and, and, it's, I, and I it's, find that they are doing way better post-op. Because, I mean, the thing that people don't realize is, so posterior approach means they go in through the back. Yes. So near your butt crack. Anterior approach is in the front, near your front of your hip. Mm. Yeah. So in the back, the reason why it's a problem is because you cut through your glute. Yes. And the glute is the main supporter of your hip. The reason why in the past they would avoid it is because in the front is your femoral artery and your femoral nerve. So the cost-benefit analysis of killing your glute versus killing you they went to the glute side, but now that they've improved the instruments, they don't have to worry about no, killing they're... people as much as before. Yes. And so when you have a hip replacement, the, the posterior approach, the cut through your butt approach, you, you can't flex your knee, so you can't bring your knee up greater than 90 degrees. Again, it's all about preventing that dislocation. I've also heard, I don't know if you've heard this, I've talked to some surgeons and they say, if a hip, if a hip replacement is gonna dislocate, there's nothing you can do that's gonna dislocate. Because again, in the surgery, they are violently trying to repeatedly dislocate and relocate that hip. Yes. So I mean, I, I would never want to be the therapist that causes that to happen. But it's, I think, again, you see people who are so afraid to move post-surgery because of those precautions. And they don't even understand what 90 degrees is. They're afraid to, to sit or to move their hip. They move like 30 degrees and they're like, is that 90? Yeah. And they get freaked out. The other thing I've also, some of the, talking to some of the uh, physicians, uh, is that it's not just the one precaution. It's usually a combination of all two three. or all three right. is is what's really going to, 
you know, oh knock that out. <laughs> it, so it's one of those like not going past ninety. It's like right. you know, you it's that's that's okay, but it's when you bend over and then you add that little twist, and next thing you know, you're you're down on the ground. Have you ever seen a hip replacement dislocate? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it, it was, the patient was not happy. No, it's, it wasn't me. It's it's extremely yeah. They the patients know, and I've in it's same. Uh, vice versa like I've had someone like I think I dislocated it and you're like uh and then they're kind of walking over to you and you're like nah you didn't dislocate yeah, it no. like you, you, know. you know you're yeah. not walking on it you're you're in severe pain yeah um so that's something to consider if you're getting you know if you're somebody I think if you're somebody who's more active you probably want to do a little surgeon search and if I if it was me I would get an anterior approach I, I I also concur. I would I would probably go anterior. And the other thing too is some surgeons I do know, like depending on how they were trained, right. they they have a preference of what they they enjoy, what, what approach they they yeah. do. But some of them will branch out, and some of them will do both. Right. So it's one of those where you need to just discuss with them what their thoughts are. Right. Can you do this approach? If right. not. You know, just talk with them and ask them and figure that out. But be some of them will like be like, oh, oh, that's if if that's what you really want, then yeah, that's fine. That we we can go that way. Right. So something to bring up when you're doing your pre-op stuff. Yeah. And then lastly, with the exercises, do you? Well, you you've always kind of seen post. We see we now see pre and post, and I don't think people put enough focus on the strength and flexibility that they have going into the surgery versus post-surgery. Yes. I think I think people don't understand that the strong, I always say the stronger you are, the more flexible you are going in, the better you are coming out, and the faster you're going to recover. And that, and, is just as important as the post. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with that. And I think a lot of people, I, I just think in general exercise, but just walking is is a great exercise. Sure. Like just just getting out there and just moving, walking, getting the range of motion and getting that compression on the joint is yeah. pre and post. And even the cardiovascular aspect of it, just the overall blood flow, you know, people might not realize that blood is how we heal. So the better blood flow you have, the better your efficient, the more efficiency your system has, the faster you're going to recover from the surgery too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're somebody who's going to get a hip replacement, these are things that you should consider. And then when you get your hip replacement, the only place you should go is orthocore. Orthocore physical therapy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, any other tips, tidbits that you think people should know about their hip replacements? Uh, no, I mean, if you just you read through the article, I mean, it just gives you a little bit of information on other things to think about. Uh, I mean, I know if older people, yeah. especially if they live alone, there's just more things you need to think about and be prepared. What were uh, you talking about the other day? We had a patient who was considering getting a replacement, but um, she has a husband who she takes. She's the caregiver for, and you. There was something. It, oh, they. I think most facilities will do respite care. So. So it, what's that? So it's uh, so someone who is if you're the caregiver for someone at home, uh, they can go into a facility with you, uh, and they'll get the care that they need on a daily basis so you know they could both get a room together uh and they'll you know help your loved one while you're going through rehab uh or vice versa even if you're strong enough to go home you can go home and you can put that loved one in a nursing care facility for respite care uh for a week two weeks you know and again i believe insurance depending on the insurance, will help cover that. Yeah. Or it might just be a full cost to you, but it, it, it's, a, it's an option you can you can think of. Yeah, and I didn't know that that was a possibility until that came up with that. But I, I think that's another thing that will deter people from getting their, taking care of themselves because they're so focused on taking care of their, their significant other or their loved one, like you said. So something else to consider, people, if you're somebody who needs a hip replacement or somebody just in surgery in general and you're a caregiver for somebody, you don't have to neglect yourself in order to take care of that other person. And it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, exactly. I know a lot of people, I mean, even me included, like sometimes you just, you're, you're grown up, you're like, I, I can do this, I can do this. Right. But if you're by yourself, you're going to get a hip replacement. You know, there's going to be certain things you might not be able to do right off the bat. 
and it's okay to ask a friend, yeah. do you yeah, mind going shopping for me? And yeah. people will. Yeah. Unless you're just not a nice person. Unless you're Ed, in which case he can never get a replacement. No one's going to help me. <laughs> cool. Um, well, that is episode five in the books. Ed, first guest. Best guest so far, I have to say. I'm number one. Number one in my heart and in my episode. And I appreciate your time. Thanks for giving the people some tidbits. If you have any questions, any more questions for Ed, uh, feel free to reach out to him, emergent at orthocorept.com. Uh, if you want his cell phone, that's an upcharge. So I can't give that on the, po- on the podcast because Autumn won't like that. No, she will not. <laughs> well, Ed, thanks for being the guest. And uh, we will check everybody next time on the All About PT podcast. Bye. Bye.